How we can do that? How organization can build the great places to work? Organization can build great place to work by identifying the right HR policies and procedures according to the four drives we just explained. This also requires constant employee communication, employee development, employee involvement and employee recognition. Employee communication can be in the form of regular email, town halls, open forums, opportunity to interact with the top management more frequently. Organizations have to identify various ways to communicate with employees. Employee development, we discussed about this aspect in the training and development related sessions. Employee involvement, we talked about uh, different uh, communication plans, we talked about quality circles, total quality management, engagement of the employees in the development of the processes and systems, cross functional teams, uh, self directed teams, there are many interventions through which uh, employee involvement can be increased. Employee involvement has almost no limit, uh, many organizations also have representative of their employees on the board. So, up to the highest level of leadership, up to the highest level of the management forum, employee involvement is possible and employee involvement is practiced in many organizations. That is one important way of making a great place to work. Then employee recognition, we discussed about the recognition financial and non-financial rewards. We need to understand that what we recognize is what is promoted in organization. If we promote loyalty, if we recognize loyalty, it, it will get promoted. If we recognize innovation, that will be promoted. If we recognize informally the organization uh, employees ability to uh, circum circumvent the process or uh, uh, maximize their benefit within the legal means that will be promoted in the organization. So, we must understand that people are always observing what is being recognized in the organization. Whatever is being recognized is naturally gets promoted in the organization behavior and organization culture. I would like to give two examples of the two organizations which have featured in great place to work. First organization is Marico. Marico operates on three basic principles, open environment, empowerment, friendly and informal environment. It is following a as flat organization structure as possible. So, they have decided that they would be not more than five reporting levels between managing director and blue corded workmen on the shop floor. They have a strong talent management process. Talent management for the new recruits in the form of summer trainees. Many summer trainees are given the job offers. So, summer, training, uh, summer trainees are assessed and assessed very carefully and they are trained very consciously. Uh, they have robust performance management system which is very participative in nature. So, this is one example of an Indian organization where they have implemented uh, the employee involvement, employee recognition, employee development in a very coherent way. I would like to give example of another organization which is newer organization. So, Marico is the old organization, it is there in, in it is operating in the Indian market since last few decades and Indus Tower is fairly new organization established in 2007. It is a joint venture of the leading uh, telecom entities uh, Bharti, Vodafone and Aditya Villa group. It is world's largest telecom power tower company and offers telecom infrastructure to all the telecom companies in India. They also have very well crafted processes. They not only have 
the brand about those processes, but those processes are thoroughly followed in organization and that is why Endless Tower has featured in the great place to work. It has IXL program which is a leadership development program. It has a succession planning, very clear succession planning not only at the corporate level, but the circle level as well. So, they operate in the 8 or 9 circles. So, within the circles also there are clear succession planning. They have switched to cloud based HR process. So, lot of HR processes which used to be handled uh, at the circle level are now transferred to the center level and that has increased the efficiency and reduced the wastage of the efforts at the circle level. Uh, they have a, they also have a career pathing program. People uh, can multi skill themselves and have are provided flexibility to move from one vertical to another or one field, uh, uh, one function to another. That is they have branded this process with the term Lakshya. They have strong uh, graduate engineering program and they follow a principle which is hire for attitude, train for skills. So, they hire for the positive attitude uh, from the campuses and invest heavily on training the people on the skills. They have a very comprehensive appraisal system and a very clear redressal mechanism. So, if employee do not agree with the ratings, they have a clear and safe redressal system. They have very clearly defined awards and recognition. Allen OD not only focuses on the skill related inputs, it is also focused on the behavioral training, supervisory development, leadership development and they are also developing a decision support system, wherein employees decision is viewed from the data and it, this system helps people to make better sense of the data available for each employee and that helps in making better decisions next time. So, it is a uh, sophisticated decision support system which help organization to best utilize the data available to them. They have very active rather proactive diversity program, no discrimination policy and fair opportunity policies and they also have interventions related to enhancing well-being, social connection and fun at work. These processes and these activities are available, they are there in this organization not just on the papers, these are being lived through, these are connected to the different KRAs of the HR and LNOD teams and as a result of that they have very positive culture and they are featuring in the list of the great place to work. So, these are the two examples which suggest that how positive organizational practices can be converted into HR processes and systems which in turn can make the workplace enjoyable, productive at the same time. Though we are talking about all positive aspects of work uh, and the positive practices we need to recognize that irrespective of all the positive intentions and positive practices in organization, there will be A, B and C category performers in any organization. A performers meaning those who contribute most significantly, exceptionally and there are studies which suggest that 20 percent of the uh, uh, best performers actually contribute it to the 80 percent of the organizational outcome. There are, there will always be B level performers who are consistent performers. They may not give very high level or exceptional performance, but they are consistently performing well in their roles. So, these are the B performers and there will always be C performers, C level performers who, who were barely acceptable or they do not enjoy their work are not able to contribute what is minimally expected from them. So, we need to have policy to deal with the C level performers. HR processes must be geared up to identify the C performers. 
that means there has to be a good job description and performance management process. There has to be an agreement on the explicit action plan if an organization is found to be of C category because some C category people can improve with coaching and training and some other developmental inputs. But if willingness and skill both are low in C level performers, there are very less chances of the C level performer going up in the performance ladder. So, for the cases like these, there has to be a clear cut process to let go these C performers from the department or from the organization. In that process, HR and line manager have to work in sync, have to work jointly so that no unfair decision is not taken against the C performers, but there has to be a mechanism through which C, per C level performers can be identified and can be asked to leave the department or organization if it is necessary. For that, there has to be clear performance criteria and organization policy that can be different in different industries. That is why it cannot be explained in detail over here in this session, but the we must recognize at least that there has to be a policy and process of recognition of the C performance. Each organization has to have a good disciplinary policy as well. We cannot expect all the people doing always right things even if uh, organization have all the intentions to implement all positive practices and all positive things in the organization. There might be incidences where people will uh, not follow the norms people will slip and caught not following the best practices. For that organizations always have to have disciplinary policy. A good and fair disciplinary policy has to have clear rules and regulation, penalties which has to be of the graded level. When you commit, when you are found to commit indiscipline first time there has to be some penalty if it is repeated in next few weeks or months the, the severity of the penalty should increase and if the repetition again happens there has to be a more severe penalty. When employee is levied a penalty he or she has to be given chance and there has to be a forum where he or she can explain his perspective, his take about the incidents and that committee should work according to the process and free from bias. These are the three basic pillars, three main pillars of a fair discipline process. A discipline should be ensured as much as possible without punishment. So, uh, first step is generally oral reminder about the indiscipline. If the incidence arises again, then has, there has to be a formal written, written reminder or warning where per person can be asked to go for the leave and there has to be a process about the inquiry and appeal and if things are proved there has to be a process of dismissal in certain cases. So, uh, discipline process and the penalties have to be of the graded nature. That is where we end our discussion about the positive organizational practices and its connection with the HR systems and processes. So, in this session we looked at the positive practices uh, in organizations, how HR systems and processes can incorporate positive aspects in organization and we also looked at that in spite of the deep intentions about implementing positive practices there can be incidences about indiscipline, there can be incidences about lack of performance. So, an organization has to have positive practice, but also have to have processes to deal with the poor performers and to deal with the indiscipline uh, being done by the employees.